Okay guys, so I failed in my low buy year for 2023. Now I never made a low buy year video, but that was my intention that I wasn't gonna buy too many designer items or too many handbags this year, but I did kind of fail and I did buy more than I was expecting. Now guys, I did make a whole separate video about where I think I went wrong and the mistakes that I made as to how I ended up failing this low buy year because I actually wanted to really either buy no or maybe very little number of handbags and I did want to stay underneath the price point of 1000 Australian dollars which is definitely something that I exceeded in both quantity and dollar value and I go into a bit more depth about what I think went wrong and how I want to go into 2024 moving forward so I'll link that video up above and in the description box down below for you but for today's video I'm just going to go in and show you a quick overview of all these beautiful designer handbags and non-designer handbags that I ended up buying this year. So I'm going to go in the order that I bought them from. Okay, so the first bag I bought in 2023 is this Louis Vuitton Saint Cloud in the monogram in the PM size. Now guys, honestly, this was a bag that I actually never thought I would buy because I already own it in the GM size. And I've owned it in the GM size since about 2018 and I've been perfectly happy with this GM. So I thought that's done. I don't need a duplicate in my collection. The big mama's doing a great job. However, I was just trolling the website of my favorite seller brand JFA and I was on their direct website, not their eBay store. And I happened to see this for about 250 US dollars, which I thought was a really good price. So this ended up being an impulse buy. Now guys, I don't encourage anyone to do impulse buys because it can often end in regret. And also I've talked about how I have impulse control issues and toxic shopping issues in a video that I'll link up here. So I don't encourage anyone to go down the path of impulse buys because it can be really bad for us but this is an example of an impulse buy and luckily for me it turned out to be a good outcome because this was a bag that I never intended on ever owning because honestly I thought it was going to be too small for me because I already thought this was a great size so you can see the size difference here and it turned out to be a really good cute size and guys I loved it so much I ended up making a whole comparison video between the PM and the GM to help out anyone who is confused as to which size would be great for them and guys I must say this is a very very cute bag if you're interested in getting one for yourself hey everyone and if we haven't met before I'm Lady Vintage Bags and I love vintage designer handbags and I'm here to show you that you can not only own but even collect gorgeous designer handbags just on a budget by buying vintage so if you love pre-love vintage and affordable designer handbags then stick around and hit subscribe because I'm your girl okay now back to the video okay now the next two handbags I bought were designer dupes and I actually got them from Timu in the same month so these are my Hermes designer dupes. This is my dupe for the Hermes Mini Kelly. And this is my dupe for the Hermes Kelly Disordre. I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, but it's like the distorted Kelly. And I bought these designer dupes because the original versions of these brands are definitely not within my budget for 2023. And I wanted to be able to test drive the shape. I wanna know what the hype is all about. I wanna know, is it gonna be that cute? on me and I must say the mini Kelly I have learnt that it looks super cute but I do not like how it functions and I actually never grab this dupe luckily I only paid 12 Australian dollars for it so that's like what eight US dollars and this is a dupe that has feet for eight US dollars ish or 12 Australian dollars get a feet you get a turn lock you get a compartment there I thought this was a great price for a dupe eight US dollars, 12 Australian dollars. But I have now learned that I do not like how this functions. So I now have really no desire to spend my money on an Hermes Mini Kelly. Of course, I'll take one for free, but I have no desire to save up and buy the real Hermes Mini Kelly now. And that was a good lesson. Now the Kelly Disordre dupe, this is a bag that I really like the function of. And this is such an interesting looking bag, guys. This one I got for about 25 Australian dollars on Timu. So that's like what, between 18 and 20 US dollars. So again, not too bad. 
And from this bag, what I learned is that actually I don't mind silver hardware. I always thought I'm just a gold hardware kind of girl. You also get feet on this one, but maybe it's just with this color combination with the blue, but I actually do not mind silver hardware. I used to be against it. I was like, no, silver hardware. It's not for me. I even had a Louis Vuitton pochette accessoire that was in the Epi Electric, so the Epi leather, but the patent finish one with silver hardware. And that bag just did not work with me and my outfit. So that's why I thought I'm not a silver hardware girl until I got this bag. So this one is super cute. Now for this one, it would make me think that if it was in my budget to ever be able to afford the Distorted Kelly, that is something that I would think about. However, those bags are like 20 grand. So it doesn't seem realistic for me to save up for one of those, even though I really do like the dupe. And both of these, I featured them in my designer dupe collection video. So if you wanna see more of my designer dupes, I'll link that video up above and in the description box down below for you. Now the fourth bag I got this year's Dun, dun, dun. She is another St. Cloud. So earlier in the year, I had already bought the St. Cloud in monogram in the PM size. And then I found this St. Cloud in the GM. So now this is the second St. Cloud GM. Now in the Epi leather, in the Kenyan fawn. Guys, if you watch my channel, you know I love, love, love Kenyan fawn Epi. So now I have a monogram and I have an Epi St. Cloud GM. This is potentially too big for some people, but it is not too big for me. And the great thing is I can carry a bottle of water in this. So if you're someone who likes to keep hydrated, and I don't know what size bottles of water other people in other countries use, but a 600 ml bottle of water, which is the standard size in Australia, fits if you have it laying down in the St. Cloud GM. And guys, I've been wanting an Epi one for so long. I couldn't decide if I wanted the PM, or maybe I wanted to try the MM or the GM. But this one was a really good condition one, which I thought was at a reasonable price. So I paid about 500 Australian dollars. So about 350 US dollars for this one. But I thought the condition was very, very, very good. Very, very good. Like it looked like they'd only used it a couple of times. There is a sticky pocket and that's probably the worst thing about the condition of this bag, which is something I can deal with because I even have a whole tutorial about how to clean sticky pockets, which I'll link up above. But the exterior, the structure, everything was love it. And now I'm the proud owner of three St. Clouds. Now the fifth bag I bought this year is this beautiful cognac leather bag. This is another dupe I bought for the Hermes Kelly. So this is like a dupe for the Hermes Kelly 28. So it's a little bit smaller, but it's got that same basic shape. Got the top handle, you've got the strap, you've got a flap. Obviously it's not the same turn lock mechanism, but this one is actually really cool. You can flip it down or you can flip it up. And it actually has different textures. So it's got a pattern on this side or smooth on this side. And it has feet as well. And this is a bag that I only paid about 30 Australian dollars for. And I got this from AliExpress. So this is from a Chinese brand called it to mood and I did a whole unboxing video about this because I was so impressed with the quality for the price. Now this is not a designer handbag, but for the price I paid $30, I was really impressed with the quality that I got for $30. And it has a lot of detail, like you get a strap keeper. I know a strap keeper seems like such an insignificant thing, but it does so much for the function and the look of the bag to keep it sleek. There's nothing worse than having this flap flapping around everywhere. And the fact that it even has the brand name imprinted onto the hardware, I thought this is just nice touches that you would usually have to pay a bit more than $30 for. Granted, I got it on sale. That's not the normal price. Normally this bag is priced between 50 and 70 Australian dollars, but I got a sale and I got it for 30 Australian dollars. Beautiful feet, fabric interior, not leather interior. And it says that this is exterior Togo leather. Look, I don't know how, if there's different qualities of Togo leather, that's just what the tag said. But in any case, it looks like Togo. And I'm sure if it is, it's probably the lowest quality in a very thin layer only because it's only $30. Like how much, like this is not going to be Hermes Togo leather, that's for sure. And I'm fine with that because I only paid $30. So I'm not expecting to be given Hermes Togo leather at $30 price point. 
but I thought this was such a great bag. I even wore it to a wedding. Like you would think this is not a fancy looking bag, but it went really well with my dress. I needed to carry a little bit more. I took off the straps and just wore it top handle only on the crook of my arm. And it looks so sophisticated. So guys, even though we're luxury bag lovers, these designer dupes or these other non-luxury bags, this can fit the bill. Okay, bag number five. So we're heading into my Christmas presents from me to me. And this was the first one. This is my Louis Vuitton. Yes, another Louis Vuitton. This is the Mabillon backpack, which is in epi leather in noir or black color. Guys, this is such a sleek, sophisticated looking backpack. You can use it professionally. You can use it casually. You can use it semi-casually. This is such a gorgeous bag. Now for me, I believe that this bag is actually more beautiful than the current handbags on offer on the Louis Vuitton website. Look how sleek this is. This is beautiful. But mind you, you do have to understand that being epi leather, it's very stiff, meaning that the capacity is not going to be that good because there's no stretch in the bag. This is size between the Palm Springs Mini and the Palm Springs PM in terms of the exterior. However, because of the stiffness, the interior capacity is probably closer to the Palm Springs Mini or maybe even less than the Palm Springs Mini because that's a canvas bag and it's got more room. This is such a sleek bag, guys. So what I paid for this, so it's about 420 US dollars. So that's the final price, including my promo code, which worked out to be about 660 Australian dollars. And I was so excited to finally add this to my collection after wanting it since like 2019. The prices have finally become reasonable again after all the rises that happened on the pre-love market in 2020 and 2021. So I'm really happy to have finally added this to my collection. And I been wearing it since I got it. So if anyone is looking for a Louis Vuitton backpack that's sleek and kind of like mini size, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. And bag number six that I got in 2023. This is my second Louis Vuitton present from me to me. And I also bought this with the promo code on eBay. And this is the Louis Vuitton Cellier Dragon Clutch in the epi leather in the Capango gold color. Guys, this one, I was so excited to unbox as well. So I'll link that unboxing video here for you. This is such a gorgeous, gorgeous clutch. And this is like a smaller version of the Monceau bag, which is a really popular alternative to Pochette Matisse. So if you look at it here, so it's shorter in the height and shorter in the length and a bit skinnier as well. And it is a clutch. And what I loved about this one is that it came with the original set of two keys. Not only is it hard to find them with their original key, let alone both original keys. So that was beautiful. And guys, if you didn't know, these are actually functional locks. So there it's open. And then you turn the key. And now it's locked. Turn the key back. And now it's open. So guys, this is another piece I wanted since 2018. But this was another piece that I got priced out of with all those pre-love market price rises that happened in 2020 and 2021. And I finally now got priced back in to be able to get one at a reasonable condition. And actually, I always planned on hacking this bag into a crossbody by punching holes into the back so I could attach a strap. Same as what I did with my Montaigne. But this one was in terrible condition, so that's why I didn't mind hacking it. But this one is in such beautiful condition, so I'm kind of thinking I don't want to hack it. I'll have to find another way to add straps. Maybe by getting like a conversion kit, like a bag organizer with grommets, because I don't want to punch holes in it anymore. It's too beautiful. So guys, with all the bags that I have review videos on, I will link them down below. But I want to hear from you, which bag was your favorite out of the bags I bought this year? And I want to know, how did you go with your year? Did you have a low buy year or did you not have a low buy year? What was your intention? Were you intending to have a low buy year and did you kind of fail like I did? Or did you have no intention of having a low buy year and you were actually ticking things off your wish list? I'd love to hear what your journey of buying in 2023 was. And if you want, put down the bags you bought. I want to know what everyone else bought as well. And guys, I was telling you earlier in the beginning of the video that I understand now and I realize now that I actually have a lot of toxic shopping habits, a lot of impulse control issues. And that's why in the beginning, I intentionally sat, I intentionally set a low buy year for myself, even though I failed. But if you want to know more about these discoveries I've made about my own toxic shopping habits, I'm actually going to leave that video here for you to carry on next. And maybe some of the things I talk about in this video can help someone out there or can resonate with someone out there.